UK Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab told the BBC that Boris Johnson's new exit deal has enough support in Parliament to win a vote in the Commons this week. This after the UK Prime Minister failed to get enough support for his deal on Saturday. Mr Johnson was forced under the Benn Act to ask the EU for a three-month delay to Brexit. Joining me to discuss is Paul Sedgwick from Frank Investments. Paul, I mean, good to see you. I wanted to ask you, do you think that Mr Raab is right in his um, expectations that Mr Johnson will be victorious in terms of a vote in the Commons this week? Personally, yes. I think that, he, that, I think that there is enough... There's a lot of pressure, well, there's enough, but hopefully there's enough pressure on Parliament t from the business community and from, I, th I believe, the, the public in general, that they want to see this put behind them. They want to move on. We voted in 2016, rightly or wrongly, for Brexit. And I think a lot of people now want to see that delivered. They want this uncertainty taken out of the way. And I think they want to see Parliament deliver on this, on this deal. Because Mr Johnson wrote that letter very reluctantly. We know he wrote it, but he didn't actually sign it. Yeah. And then he wrote another letter yeah. saying that he didn't really want this delay at all. It seems as though the rhetoric from his government has been that a delay is not going to be a good thing. But, I mean, from the EU side, do you think that they're likely to approve this delay? I think it's a difficult one for them. I think that, obviously, they don't. It, it, doesn't hurt, it doesn't help any of us for us to leave without a deal. And it suits both... Europe and the UK to, to, to come up with a solution to going with the deal. They've worked very hard on both sides and I would have thought the EU must be finding this a bit frustrating now. They've spent a large amount of time and effort and three and a half years trying to come to this position and I think that they would feel fairly frustrated that they now can't get this over the line as well or we can't get this over the line. So I think it'll be in a difficult position if they don't grant us an extension, they do run the risk of, uh, of, of a no deal exit which isn't good for them. If they do um, grant an extension, they, they run the risk of letting this ramble on and on. They may argue that actually that it may rumble on and on and on and we give another extension and eventually Brexit never actually happens, which is what they want, but maybe what they want, but so the, 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 it's a difficult one for them. Will they on balance probably take, grant an extension? Probably because they want to avoid a no-deal Brexit, but they might put conditions up against that as well. So that Letwin amendment over the weekend was essentially a kind of insurance policy to try and avoid that hard Brexit crash-out yeah. situation. I mean, what are the chances of a no-deal right now, do you think? Well, I, I think... <laughs> Pretty low, I would suggest. I mean, I think that it do, in any negotiation, it doesn't suit either side for a no-deal Brexit. Yeah. It does suit both sides. Parliament, I think everybody, the consensual opinion in as a body would like to stay within, would like to remain. So they're, they're, they feel slightly conflicted. They're voting for something they don't necessarily believe in. But on the other hand, they want to deliver on what was... The, um, the referendum result. So they feel, so I think that neither side wants to leave without a deal. Uh, hopefully that will mean we won't leave without a deal. I think everybody agrees that leaving without a deal would be, in the, particularly in the short term, would be damaging to the UK economy. I think it's in the best interest. So hopefully they'll come to a solution, come to a deal, and then come to something which then, uh, which, which works for everybody. So taking a look at the chart of cable here, we've seen this impressive rally in recent sessions, although today it is giving back a little bit of gains, down by about a third of 1%, currently changing hands just above 129. I mean, we've heard from Goldman Sachs that it could go up to 135 if we get a deal. What are your thoughts on the well, outlook? I mean, we, it was 140 before um, the Brexit announcement. You have had seen some strengthening the dollar itself over that period of time. So I would have thought it's quite possible to see it back to 135. Um, and there has been quite a lot of negative sentiment around sterling, UK assets in general, with the uncertainty over Brexit. If that is lifted, you could see a bit of a, 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 a short-term boost to the UK economy. You could see interest rates go up another quarter of a percent. So one could easily paint a picture where sterling has a bit more of a, a climate. People have, as I said, have been pretty negative. So, the opportunity, so there may be some still short covering to take place as well. So in terms of the week ahead, we saw a lot of movement in the banks and also the housing stocks last week when Boris Johnson announced that deal, saw a bit of a rally there. Is that likely to be where the price action is in the week ahead, in those sectors? 
quite well. Yes, I think you probably. I mean, you'll probably see a bit of a pullback this morning in the way, same way that cable has mm -hmm. come back. So you may see a bit of a selling off of of some of the more domestic related names because they have had quite a good run. But actually, they still. I mean, if you see a more positive outlook for the UK economy in general, uh, if Brexit is out of the way, then actually the UK domestic stocks should continue to perform. I mean, we talked last time about how, how weak they had been with all of this uncertainty, and they have regained some of that. You may find that, um, obviously, there's always this correlation people talk about between sterling and the FTSE 100 because it's such an internationally based index. But actually, you've seen sterling, as, as we were talking about shortly, pretty weak this year. And the FTSE's been one of the least uh, performing indexes over the year so far. So actually, it hasn't necessarily boosted the, the FTSE as much as you'd have expected it to. So I think that generally, if you get some uncertainty out of the way, I think sterling could well continue to recover. And I think you could see some um, continued interest in uh, the, the FTSE 100, 250 in all share. All right, Paul, thank you very much. Thanks very much. That was Paul Cedric from Frank Investments. I'm Victoria Scholar and thanks for watching IGTV.